welcome on this beautiful morning where we took this Axopar 45 cross cabin out at Port Calanova in this fantastic bay. Right in front, by the way, of the King's Summer House, the Spanish King that is. We're really fortunate to be able to take this boat out as this is a prototype which just arrived for the Axopar customer days and dealer days, which just finished. So I got to experience this Axopar 45 cross cabin in many different ways. And I must say, I really love the boat. It's big. I mean, the last model they introduced, or at least one step smaller, I should say, is the 37. And this is quite a step from uh, the, th the 37. But uh, let me just take you through it so that I can explain everything on this Axopar 45 cross cabin. And as usual, I'd like to start with the bow, where we have this uh, anchor hatch, which this time has been made in two pieces. And that has been done because, again, it's a huge, huge boat, which of course requires quite a big anchor. And by doing this, it just makes it easier to access this and have different solutions in this bow area. This particular boat has this catapult kind of system where the actual anchor folds out, uh, which I think is a great solution in areas such as here in Mallorca where, the, uh, where most boats are moored in the marina uh, going bow first, where you go on and off the boat uh, from the bow. Uh, and if you have a really big anchor in the bow, of course it's a huge step to take and maybe even impossible. And that's why you can actually fold this in. This is one of the two possibilities, the other one being a normal bow roller with the other advantage that you still have quite a bit of room here in this anchor locker and as you may be able to see there are two fenders here but you could even store more. There's plenty of place for long uh, anchor chains or maybe a line. I think most people would use a chain instead. Uh, short power cables here, the controls for the anchor. So I think a great solution. Of course there's non-skid on the bow area. Nice cleats. This one doesn't have the Axopar logo engraved yet, but again, this is a prototype, so I'm sure these uh, things will still be changed. But this is the solution for the anchor. Let me close it. You may also notice the upholstery here, which is actually, this comes together with the Mediterrana package, which, which is on this particular boat. Uh, I truly like this upholstery. Some people are a bit hesitant about how it will be um, in the future if you take a boat such as this out and maybe uh, sometimes it catches a bit of water but from other dealers I hear that it's actually quite good so uh, I'm quite confident that it will be a good solution this Mediterranean and I really like the looks of it, it makes the boat warm and cozy so that's this Mediterranean you can also recognize it with this piping you just saw me here on the sun lounge in the bow area you may also notice there's a, a small window there, so the natural light in the front cabin is really good. Of course, all the railings are stainless steel 316 quality, proper cup holders. And one detail that I personally like is, is these different grills. They are just a bit less in the face, I would say, so more subtle, really like it. And I'm bringing that up because in the cabin they've even um, concealed uh, basically the speakers which i think is just a great solution um, let me get back um, of course one of the main features of this axopar 45 cross cabin are these going doors let me also open up the other one because i think this actually helps I would say diffusing inside and outside experiences. These doors opening, I didn't take the steps down, so I have to be kind of brave. Let me take away this cushion for a moment and fold out the step so that my camera partner can also come in. I really like this bow area, by the way, it's really big. Uh, and again, these going doors make the experience a really nice one. 
I usually tend to have the feeling that when I'm off, I really want to feel the sun rays, I want to feel the wind through my hair. And this actually makes you, well, feel really comfortable and enjoying the nice outdoors. Um, I, know I mentioned the steps already. There's one here, of course, also, which you can see here, which in this way is concealed with this nice cushion on. And if you put the cushion on, on that side, perhaps you can film from that angle. Kiki, Kiki's my new camera partner, as I mentioned. If I conceal this one, do it like this, and put this down, you'll see that we have a full U sofa here. So imagine being out here and just sitting here with quite a few people. I mean, this is actually, I would nearly call it a second cabin. It's really big. And of course, there's a possibility to sleep here. If I fold this down, you'll see that there's quite a big, actually a really big double bed. I tend to uh, crawl on the bed to show how big it is, but there's really no need to do it here because it's huge. There's a huge bed. And I like the nice details such as having a mirror there and these nice upholstered panels. There's uh, openings for either the AC or the heating, depending on what climate you use your boat in. And turning the other way around, um, you may also notice that Axapar is using a lighter wood in this Axapar 45 cross cabin, which I think is a really nice uh, thing to do because it just makes this front, this bow area, a lot lighter and nicer. And the combination with these dark uh, tabletops, I would call them, I think personally is a really nice one. Of course, it's a matter of taste, but that is quite a nice one. There's a sink here, so you could wash your hands. And more importantly, there's plenty of place to put out a coffee machine. And I think that as a standard, Axapar will be using an inverter, so there's plenty of opportunities to uh, use a coffee machine in this Axapar 45 cross cabin. There's storage. I think this is also the place here. Actually, there's a coffee machine, but you could even have like a um, microwave in here. So there's lots of possibilities to make your life on board really comfortable. There's storage behind me, below here. And on the other side, again, there's nice subtle speakers, nice gray paneling covered here and of course a head but before I go in you may notice me being the one meter 92 guy as I always uh, say in my videos this is the spot where I can actually stand which is on none of the other Axapar boats but this is a place where I can stand here it's a bit lower I would say one meter 80 perhaps slightly lower but there this just feels like a very airy roomy bow area this being the head, let me put the light on with the extractor fan also coming on. And let me just go in to show you how big it is. I like this nice black coated uh, tab here and all the other accessories. It's a nice tasteful combination. This is actually quite big. And if you are not as tall as me, you can see that I cannot stand up straight here. But it, there's not a big difference. I, I think the standing height is maybe 188, 190, I don't know. But I could really take a proper shower in this area. Of course, there's storage in here also. As you can see, electric toilet. So again, done in a really nice way. Going further back, and you may notice this. this is, these are the things that make Axapar, an experienced boat builder. It's having these cutouts, which in practice are really nice. I mean, this is the experience that you get if you are building boats for quite a long time or working with boats, uh, that is, because having this cutout just makes you access and enter the boat in, much, in a much more easy way. There's one thing I am nearly forgetting, and that there's a charging point, a wireless charger, Right here, there's one on the other side also. You see these cutouts where you could, of course, put your uh, drink. 
But there's a charger, wireless charger right here, and there's one on the other side. And there's two more in the main cabin. A nice detail. Let me go outside from this side for a change. Here we go. Let me go around because we have somebody uh, from Axapar helping us out as we're floating in this bay near Calanova. So we have skipper Marco taking care of us, not being, well, pushed against the rocks. So here we're entering the main salon, which as you can see is huge. And not only that, there's lots of daylight. There's two roof areas that can open and actually have been opened just now. So there's a lot of natural light in this cabin. Um, and it's big. I mean, let me just sit down so that you, so that you get some idea on how big it is. By the way, these are the places for the charging points, wireless charging, one here, one on the other side. And uh, well, this being a really comfortable salon, it's big, as I already mentioned. You could even sit here, I think, maybe up to 10 people or so. And it's just a nice atmosphere with this sliding bench slash leaning post slash galley which takes a bit of explaining this actually slides on two rails so it can move either forward or off depending on the way you use it so if you were for example to prepare a meal meal here you would slide it to the aft of the boat so that you actually have quite you know, quite a bit of place to uh, prepare a nice meal there's a nice sink here by the way it's really big and on this boat, Axapar fitted a grill, electric, but you could also have uh, like an induction stove and maybe depending on the area where the boat is used, local dealers could install other solutions here. And not only that, so this you can use as a galley, but you could also use it as a leaning post like I'm doing now. Then again, you can slide it a bit more aft, but this is also useful as a leaning post. As, and with these three seats here and this place here, plenty of place here in the aft. There's actually a lot of place to carry all the friends you'd want to bring. We've actually been taking this boat out with a lot of dealers and we've been inside this boat with, I think, 12 people or so. And that really works out and it's fine. And still then, it's fun to drive. Coming to think of that, the really good thing is, of course, the really low center of gravity. Even if you bring such a big group of people the boat doesn't feel top heavy, which is something I truly notice while driving. We've had quite a bit of wind uh, the last couple of days, but still, the drivability is perfect. But again, this seating area with a nice table, with a fold-out solution like this, so you could really have a nice meal, a few other things. This can also be turned 90 degrees, depending on the way you'd like to use it. And this also slides forward and aft. A really nice other feature, maybe we'd have to switch positions because, um, let me look, no, where did we put the balcony door out? That's on this side. So let me show you this side. What Axapar has done is that they made this door slide both ways, as I'm showing you. And all of a sudden there's a really nice opening door, I would call it, in the transom, in the hall, inside. Axapar has been calling these balcony doors, which I think is a really right, pr a proper name, because it just feels like more or less a balcony with which you extend your living area. We have uh, the wind picking up a bit, so I hope, I hope the audio is doing okay, but being out here feels like you're connected with the rest of the salon and it just extends the living area. Imagine doing the same on the other side, which of course also slides both ways. Let me just quickly doing that. do that. Mm. 
with the balcony door and this side being closed, so you also get to see that. This just makes this area huge. We actually have the sun coming in from this side, so in this particular case I'd probably not use that side, but use this side, this side instead, which also can have a cushion on the balcony door. And there's storage, quite a big one actually, right here. Let me quickly open this like this. Of course, you should you'd probably do this with the balcony door open. So you can see it's really big. It's kind of insulated with this nice fiberglass, so you could put your drinks in and still be able to clean it easily. So that is the balcony doors again, which I think is a really key and great new feature, which I've never seen on other boats. One thing worth mentioning, by the way, also is that even with the goal, uh, sorry, with the balcony door open, this does not feel unsafe. You may notice that this is actually still a bit elevated, which I think is a lot better than the folding out uh, doors which come all the way to the floor level because then if this would be on the floor level I think I'd feel unsafe uh, falling off easily and it just doesn't feel like this on this oxapar. I mean going from the aft forward or vice versa just still feel safe. Now that I'm here please note also that the um, this side, these sides are actually really high. I'm uh, quite tall, as I mentioned, but having kids on board, this is a really safe boat. This just works, I think, in a great way. There's still this um, sort of rail here on the roof to grab onto, and of course there's other solutions like these rails. So safety is an important and really practical thing on this Oxapar 45 cross cabin. Just thinking if there's anything else I'm missing out here. This is also something I'd like to uh, point out uh, the use of. There's three of these supports. Uh, it probably is an option, but still having three of these um, adds to the functionality. And why am I saying that? We've actually had a, a kayak on top of the roof over the last couple of days, which I think was maybe up to four meters or even slightly longer, which is quite big. And uh, there aren't a lot of boats in this segment who can actually carry a kayak. And there not only was a kayak, there was also a mountain bike and a stand-up pedal board. So you could take all the toys you'd need and live your adventure, as Aksapar uh, says. It is a true adventure boat uh, with the uh, ability to take all the fun stuff you'd like to go out to an island and uh, have some fun. Um, there's storage of course in many places here. One thing I should mention it is that there's also some storage, I would call it, underneath the floor here. This boat not having the aft cabin solution has some storage below the middle seat here. It's actually quite big. We put the cushions of the which are supposed to go on the going doors. If you have the uh, Mediterranean package, you would put them here, so it's that big. Um, but I'm mentioning the storage because this is also a, I would call it a technical place where you could fit other things such as probably inverter. Batteries are out in the back underneath the hatches, which I'll come to later. But there's plenty of space. There's nice drawers here, by the way, also on this side, which open. With the compromise being, we always say, the perfect boat doesn't exist. Um, with the compromise being that if you slide this in the most forward position, they are not accessible anymore. Well, so be it. It's not a really big deal. It's these nice practical details that I like on every Axopar. So let's go out to the back, to the open cockpit. I'm sure there will also be a Brabus line version with the black powder coated handrails and cleats. This is a non Brabus line uh, boat. And as you can see, we have a massive open cockpit here. A really big area. Um, some people may order it like this. I've seen images where Axapar is fitting, I think up to four seats here, which I think also is a really nice solution. They're looking at 
for, uh, by the way, also making storage here with, with some netting to put in, um, I don't know, life vests or other stuff, which is a practical solution. And say, here again, you have these nice speakers. And they're also making an outdoor uh, galley here, which I think is a great solution because then sitting here, being more or less protected from the wind with this cabin, and if you have the other versions, such as the sun top or the cross co uh, cabin, sorry, the cross top, uh, I think you'd experience the same protection from th these um, well panels and being able to be here sheltered from the wind. And of course, you can have a sun awning here in the back. And one of the things that I think will be one of the options being sold most probably would be the off cabin, but you get some idea on how big it will be. I've seen images. I've uh, done the 3D, uh, well, I have this 3D experience with the Verti virtual re reality, which Oxpar had here during the Oxpar customer and dealer days. So you get to more or less walk inside the off cabin and it's big. Um, there's actually a possibility to, as an option, have a second head, which is not with standing height, uh, I've been told, uh, but still it's really good to have on a 45 footer, two cabins, both having their own head. And of course, a huge bed in the aft. There's storage below here, which is actually massive. And uh, as I already mentioned, there's place also to store the batteries, etc. Let me just quickly open one. Um, there's one there, but there's plenty of storage below the floor here. And of course, these lockers on the sides are also, I have to do it in the proper way, are also really big. I didn't count them, but uh, I think you could have four fenders in here. These ni nice details I like also with the lines hanging there and keeping things nice and tidy. Triple outboards, triple 300 horsepower Mercury outboards. V8, there's quite some experience in the meantime with these great engines, which are really well known for fuel economy. And I personally think this actually, this boat actually could compete with other boats in this segment having twin diesel inboard engines with regards to cost uh, in comparison to fuel economy. Fuel economy on this boat on average is around or slightly under four liter per nautical mile, which is really a great achievement. Uh, a huge compliment to the designer, signing company being uh, Ivan, if I pronounce it connect, uh, correctly, in combination of course with the people from Axapar. They really made a really efficient hull, which Axapar is really known for. Um, but please check the fuel consumption on the other boats in this size, and you'll see that this is a true game changer. Uh, not only that, having triple outboards uh, means also that you can have the joystick functionality, with which there's uh, been quite a bit of experience, and I, again, on, uh, even on a big boat like this, really like that ease of use. So, let's go in and take her out for a spin and ask the captain if he'd like to swap places. Let me go in like this and close the balcony doors in the meantime so that we can actually take her out and see how she handles. Okay, thank you Marco. Already here you may notice that the boat is, like we're used to, extremely quiet. You hardly hear the engines while you're inside the cabin. It's so nice and smooth with these nice uh, digital throttles. And it's a really great way to drive a big boat such as this one. I've been hearing dealers saying that it feels like a really sporty boat, which compares uh, with regards to handling to maybe even 20, the 28. Um, 
to be honest, I do feel that it's a big boat, but I see that as a big, big uh, plus because it just feels very uh, reliable. It's big. It doesn't. It's not nervous at all. Uh, but still, if you want to take it to tight corners, I mean, it is like a sport boat. But uh, you'll get to experience that. Um, there's some some things I'd like to point out. For example, this multi functional steering wheel with all these buttons right here. That is something I truly appreciate because this means that you can have less buttons. So there's no separate controls for uh, the joystick, uh, sorry, for the trim tabs, uh, for example. Uh, you could um, you put the volume of the audio higher and lower from here, which is uh, helping in making the dashboard cleaner, but not only that, it's really practical. And of course, it can be tilted up and down. Still have the nice Axopar buttons for things such as navigation uh, lights and two really big 16 inch multifunctional displays. I think these are the NSO versions, which are really nice. I've actually seen the new NS6 displays from Simrad. They are truly great and will be used on the new Axopar 45. And of course, Axapar has been looking at ergonomics. You may notice that I'm leaning like this, but already here. This being a prototype, this just feels perfect. It's spot on. These are on the right place. The steering wheel is on the right place. I feel safe. I feel protected. I feel comfortable. Visibility, as we're used to in a cross cabin, is really great. There's lots of windows. Coming to think of it, another thing that I did not mention about the off cabin is that they will be using a huge of the window in the transom, which I think is a truly nice uh, feature, adding lots of daylight in the aft cabin. Um, so that is something that I truly appreciate. But again, the ergonomics are really good, and I have to say that that, I think, has been uh, achieved mainly by using this virtual reality, where you actually kind of feel you're walking inside the boat, so you can actually see how far a steering wheel is uh, if the buttons are easily ac uh, accessible. But you'll see that this is all done in a way, joystick in the right place, that it's really ergonomically, I would say, perfect. VHF here, a footrest, which is used if you sit down like this. Again here, this being in a slightly angled way, just makes it uh, really practical and useful. We're doing a little over 1000 uh, RPM at the moment. Let me pick up some speed. For me, actually, this is quite something else than driving on the lake in Aalsmeer, because I'm looking at the gauge here and reading 27 meters of depth, whereas that usually is three meters in Aalsmeer. That is quite a difference. I love the conditions here. And one thing I should really mention, and it's difficult to uh, experience on a video, but uh, I hope you all get uh, to have the same experience. The thing I really want to mention is the, the way this boat um, goes up the plane. Uh, most boats, if not all, have at least some bow rise. With the boat going from a displacement speed slowly uh, up to a planing speed, slowly picking up speed, using it as a displacement boat. Of course, it's fine also doing around seven knots. Uh, and of course, the boat stays level. And most boats, planing boats, boats at least, they tend to have the bow being lifted. Um, but this boat stays ne neutral. It's difficult to show you on a video. But uh, yeah, I must say that the experience is something else. It's so nice but not only that it's also practical because if you have bow rise usually the difficult uh, speed with boats like that is between somewhere somewhere between 15 and 20 knots where you have quite a bit of bow rise causing less visibility if the boat is uh, doing this and the bow area blocking your sight that doesn't happen on this Axapar 45 cabin which says something about the design we're used to this with all Axapar boats in the range of the um, 22, 25, 28 and uh, 37 of course. But also with this uh, 45 I'm hugely um, impressed by 
the really low level of bow rise. So let me pick up some speed during around 2200 RPM and slowly taking her up to plane. And you may notice if you watch forward that again the bow is hardly being lifted. Um, I also still love the visibility, especially in the cross cabin versions where you have lots of not only visibility with all these windows around you, but also the daylight. I closed the roof, uh, by the way, and the doors uh, because we have uh, good audio then. But still, it's really nice. We're doing around 15 knots and we're sort of planing and still the bow is not being lifted. I really am impressed. So let me pick up some speed. And the really good thing also with this boat is that in the range of between uh, 18 and 35 knots fuel economy is more or less flat. It does around 4 liters per nautical mile. Uh, as I'm picking up speed, it's reducing uh, the, um, well, the uh, usage of fuel. And that is a really comfortable and good thing. So you could really cruise doing either 19 uh, knots or maybe if the waters uh, are really flat, zero waves, you could do up to 35 knots and still cruise economically. And that is hugely impressive. Uh, I must say doing 35 knots and knowing that you're still not pushing the boat and not burning too much fuel, extending your range, I think is a really good thing. The good thing also to this is, is that actually these Mercury engines, they have a control module and you actually kind of remember conditions, they gather all the data, so that this is a constant thing that is changing so that the uh, fuel economy is always optimized. And you can also use this Axopar user interface and checking boat status, but not only that, if you put it on driving mode, it actually shows you if you should go faster or slow down. Uh, now it's in economy mode, so it actually is telling me that we're doing around 4.4 liters per nautical mile with the wind from the bow. So that's fuel economy. Another good thing uh, that I should mention is um, that it feel, really feels sporty. It's a big boat. I mean, 45 is quite a big boat, but it still feels like you're driving a sport boat. We have some waves here, as you see, but still, I mean, it's fun to drive and it's just easy to drive. It maneuvers like a dream. We have an extremely dry ride. Uh, we've been on board with as many, as much as 12 uh, dealers at the same time, being all around here in the cabin because the weather hasn't been all too good and it still drives perfectly. I should also mention the low center of gravity. Even when you have 12 people in the cabin, you would think it would become a bit of top heavy. That is not the case. It still handles perfectly. Another thing that also helps is that the uh, actual hull and the stringers have been uh, built with, uh, by using um, infusion lamination, making the hull even stiffer, stronger and lighter, which of course also helps fuel economy and also makes the boat just feel more solid and uh, yeah, drive like a dream as I mentioned. Still the nose is, the bow is down, so it handles as I said, really nicely. I just like, love taking turns like this. We have a few people in the bow area, so I have to be kind of gentle, but it just moves like a dream. Let me take her back to Port Calanova and try to pick up even more speed. I think uh, we managed to get her up to uh, 48 knots approximately during sometime during the week. Doing 44, 45, I have to make a light turn here. Uh, 
let out 46, 46 knots at the moment. But again, we have had higher speeds, so oh, it's picking up to 47 approximately. It's really fast. Remember that this is a 45 foot boat and it's competing with a lot of, I think, uh, even flybridge boats, which usually have twin diesel engines. And I think cost-wise, this is really an interesting boat. And by the way, the very first outboard propelled cabin boat in this category. So it is something special. And I really love the handling of it. This whole setup with these uh, twin 16 inch screens and an extra multifunctional display here should have put this on, I want to think of it, but uh, this actually works really well. It's a beautiful, nice and clean dashboard. Again, I love the ergonomics, it's just in the right spot. So I really am convinced that this Oxapar 40B45 cross cabin is going to be a huge success worldwide. So with that, I'd like to wrap up this video. Um, of course, we'd be interested to you know what you think of this Axopar 45 cross cabin being a prototype. There are some things that need to be changed. We're missing some grab handles, uh, just to mention a uh, small thing. But if you have some comments, Mark, please leave them below this video in the comment section. Please keep following our channel. And for now, I'd like to thank you for watching. And I'd say in Spanish, hasta luego which means goodbye, see you later.